The NC500 is Scotland's most famous road trip, but it misses so many of the country's best and most iconic locations. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a better, more improved version of this famous road trip. I'll be covering the must-sees, where to steer, the resupply points, what single track roads to be wary of, and everything in between. I'll also be breaking it down into a perfect seven day road trip itinerary. Day by day I'll cover what to do, where to stay, the pit stop locations, and I've also got a new detour suggestion for you as well, and two more must see places that you'll never have heard of before. You may be wondering why the NC500 needs improving in the first place. Well, the truth is that it's actually a very good road trip. The problem is that most people who do the NC500 have traveled often from miles, Normally two days of traveling just to even get to the start point. So if you're making that kind of time and money investment into a road trip, you wanna see the best of what Scotland's got to offer. Now these pins on the map are Scotland's top 20 most iconic locations and only one of them is even on the NC500 route and that one really shouldn't be. But the reason it doesn't include the most iconic locations in Scotland is because it was never actually meant to. It was created in 2015 to bring a boost to the local economies that were in need of it. The first change of the improved NC500 is the new starting point. We're starting our road trip in the wonderful town of Aviemore, which is located right in the edge of the Cairngorms. This incredible Lock is Loch Morlick, and it's in a place right next to Aviemore called Glenmore. Now, Loch Morlick itself is littered with walks, proper hikes, mountain bike tracks. There's even a ski center up in the hills as well. There's plenty of campsites, tons of activities, a lovely little town, and everything you need to spend a few days, even a few weeks here. Now, Aviemore is the only change to the start point. It's a small change, it's no extra mileage, but it's a unique experience, unlike anywhere else that you experience on the NC500. Now, there's also a very valid reason why we're starting the road trip over on the east coast and not the west and that's because the east coast isn't as dramatic as the west and it can feel a little bit underwhelming at times and although it does have its charm you really wouldn't want this side to be the end point. Now if you're looking for a full in-depth guide to the improved NC500 road trip route we have our new NC500 improved travel guide available. Now the guide comes with over 200 pages that have everything you need to plan your dream road trip from narrow road alerts so you know when you're heading towards a difficult driving section to recommended fuel top up points so you never get caught short. We've got all of it in here. We also have itinerary examples so you can schedule easier and over 450 different things to do from viewpoints, beaches, park walks, campsites and everything else you could possibly need to plan that dream road trip. And every single location in the book comes with a QR code, which means you can scan it and easily navigate to it without messing around with postcodes. And on top of that, you also get a digital map counterpart that goes hand in hand with this book so you can plan your day-to-day -day itineraries on the go. The guide is available now. The link for this is in the description, but as a bonus, we've also made a seven day itinerary guide that you can download for free from the website. The link for that is also in the description. And as a bonus, everyone who downloads the free itinerary guide will also get a free guide to Scotland's hidden gem emailed across to them too. Now it's day number one and we have the morning in Aviemore. So what's next? Well, before you leave Aviemore, I'd suggest topping up your diesel grabbing any supplies that you need. The town's got everything really that you'd be used to back home. Next, we're heading up north through Inverness and up to our first must-see, which is only really a must-see if you've got decent fitness and mobility, providing you do, then the first must-see on the eastern section is Firish Monument. It's a great monument with some pretty interesting history and it's right on top of a hill. And on a day with decent weather, you'll also be gifted with a lovely panoramic view from the top. It's definitely worth a two mile each way hike. Now, just another quick mention of the guidebook, we do actually cover accessibility in the guidebook itself. So each location that we feel is accessible for almost everyone has this icon placed next to it and it'll hopefully save you from wasting your time visiting locations that are not really suitable for you if you haven't got particularly good mobility. After this, it's time to head up to Wick where we'll be spending the first night. If you don't want to drive the full hour and a half from Dunrobin to Wick, there's a lovely little harbour on Leatheron Wheel where you could possibly stay for the night if there's space, and that should shorten the drive by roughly half an hour. In Wick itself, I'd suggest staying in the big car park right in the town centre. It's ten pound a night, right next to a lovely little walk down the river, and it's always been quiet and perfectly silent every single time that we've been. It's day number two and we have a pretty busy morning so hopefully you've got a good night's sleep but before we leave Wick if you need to top up your diesel or any more supplies there's a big Tesco superstore just on your way out 
that again will have everything that you need. Now the first must-see of the day is only a short minute drive from Wick itself and this is Castle Sinclair. The castle itself is extremely cool, it's got a secret cove where they used to hide the ships, you can walk around most of it and it's only a short walk away from the car park which is always a bonus. But after you're finished here we're heading up to the northeast corner of Scotland. But if you specifically love castles, there is an old Keys Castle, there's a couple of others that'll be on the route that are worth a stop off. But if not, after a short drive, you'll soon be arriving at the next must which is the incredible Duncansby Stacks. Now this view is one of our favorite views in the entire country. We absolutely love it. There's a gorgeous walk all the way along the cliffs too, which is beautiful, but it can get a little bit boggy if it's been raining heavy. If you don't have great mobility, then providing you can get up a small grassy bank, you can see the stacks from near the car park and it is definitely worth the effort. Next, it's on to one that's not really amazing, but strangely we have it down as a must-see because, well, it's John O'Groats. So because it's so famous, it is a must-see for your first trip, but I'm more than certain you won't really visit again after you've been to it once. It's not bad or anything, but at the end of the day, it is just a signpost. From here, it's the beginning of the northern section, and it's more than likely around dinner time as well. So grab some food and push west. Again, there's another famous castle, which isn't too far away, which is the Castle of May. This castle was owned by the Queen's mother. So if you're a bit of a royalist or you just like castles, then this one's probably on your list as well. After that, it's time for our next must-see, which is Dunnet Beach. This beach is perfect if you've got dogs with you or you want to stretch the legs. It's absolutely massive. There's a ton of big sand dunes around it and it's just a very nice beach that you drive past anyway so it is worth a stop. After Dunnet Beach you have your next pit stop area which is Thurso. Again it's a decent sized town, it's got pretty much everything that you need to stock back up on so grab a bit shopping. It's worth grabbing the bits that you'd need because really after this one the next decent sized town you're going to get to is Ullapool. After Thurso there are more beaches, some campsites and stuff scattered around but we're going to spend the night between Thurso and Betty Hill. There are plenty of campsites and a few off-grid park ups as well so again have a look on your map, on the digital map or the book. Pick whichever you want to do and then settle down for the night because we've got another busy day ahead of us tomorrow. Day number three and today you start the new day with a new option that we discovered last time we'd done the NC500. There's a potential two hour road trip diversion you can take that takes you through some beautiful scenery. But I would only suggest this one if you're not in a huge motorhome or you are a particularly confident driver because some of the sections can actually be pretty narrow. But if you do want to take the extra diversion, you need to head south from Betty Hill to Loch Neva. The views are beautiful, the loch is absolutely huge, and even after Loch Neva, there's some incredible scenery as you drive back north towards our next stop, which is Tongue. Now at Tongue, you come to a pretty cool causeway that you have to drive across anyway, so if you're into grabbing nice photos or drone footage, this is definitely a great spot for that. After this though, you come to your first painful NC500 single track road. It starts here, and it lasts all the way around here. It's narrow, but I wouldn't say it's a hard drive. Unlike some of the sections, this section has great visibility, so you can see what's coming from quite some distance. That said, it'll still take you around an hour to get through this section, which is only around 20 miles. But as a reward, when you're coming towards the end of this stressful little driving section, you'll arrive with a view just like this. We done the zip wire and cliff jump here last time too, which was great fun. It was £15 per person per activity, which isn't the cheapest, but it is a great experience and we would recommend it to anyone who just fancies doing something a little bit different. After this, it's on the Smoo Cave, which is free and huge. So spend a bit of time exploring here and then it's not on to one beach, but two incredible beaches. The first is Sango Sands, which is one of my favorite beaches. And if you're looking for a campsite with an incredible view, I'd be hard pressed to find a better one than the one that's on the cliffs overlooking Sango Sands. You'd be looking to spend the night in this region too anyway, so it is perfectly placed providing you can get booked onto it. As I'm sure you can imagine, the campsite's always busy. Next, after that, we're onto another incredible beach, which is Balnakil Beach. And last time we visited this beach, this happened. Now after talking to the locals, they told us that not just deer, but also Highland cow often visit the beach too, which means if you are looking for a bucket list sort of Scottish photo, this is probably one of the best places you might try and get it. After the beach, it's time to try and find a spot to sleep. So again, if, I, if you are into your campsites, as I mentioned earlier, Sango Sands is a great spot, but there is some at Balnakale too. We normally find a park up next to Carla Dernis, which isn't too much further around the corner. 
Day four, and you'll be starting this morning with a bit of driving, some beautiful viewpoints, and then you'll notice the landscape starting to change. It becomes a lot more dramatic and vast as you start to head south. The first main place you're gonna arrive at is Kalaskou Bridge, which I must admit, it is cool in person, but it does look better on drone footage. Once you cross the bridge, you come to your first optional narrow single track road, but this one is a very hard decision. The road is one of the worst on the route, possibly the worst, but the rewards are possibly the greatest if you do decide to drive it. The reason it's so hard to drive is mainly just its visibility. It's a narrow road, obviously single track, but not much worse than the bits you've already driven. But this time, almost every single corner you arrive at is blind. If you do want to skip it, stay on the A894 and keep heading south. If not, turn right and follow the signpost to Clatch Tall. Eventually, you'll arrive at the beautiful Clash Nessie Falls, which is a must-see for us. It's not a long walk or a hard one to get to the waterfall, but it is on the trickier side if you've got poor mobility. But for most people, it should be fine. Next, you have three of the best beaches on the entire route. Three of probably the top five in Scotland, I'd say. You've got Store, Clatch Tall, Akmelvich Beach, Pick any of them really, all of them are amazing. White sand, beaches, turquoise water, and I guarantee your friends will not believe that these beaches actually exist in the UK. If you do pick Akmelvik Beach and you want a little bit of adventure, there's a castle called Hermit's Castle located in the rocks, just a short walk away. See if you can find it without using Google. It's pretty cool and apparently it's the smallest castle in Europe, but for most people, you're gonna to wanna to spend a good chunk of time in this area because it's absolutely beautiful. There are campsites next to all three of the beaches, so we do suggest staying in this area for the next night. Check into a campsite or find a park rope and just chill next to one of the beaches watching the beautiful sunset. So it's day five and once you leave the beaches, you're heading inland a little bit now. So once you meet back up with the A894, the roads become much better. And they stay much better pretty much all the way at the end now. So you'll arrive soon at Ardvrick Castle, which is again a must see. And then you'll head down towards Ullapool. Now Ullapool is your next pit stop. So grab everything that you need, fill your tank up. And if you are planning on heading to the Isle of Harris, this is where you'd get the ferry from. Now, if you are debating doing Harris, you get a free 90 page travel guide ebook when you buy either the NC500 Improved or the Ultimate Scottish Road Trip Travel Guides. But anyway, after Ullapool, it's packed mainly with viewpoints. You'll pass the gorgeous viewpoint called Corrie Shalick Gorge Viewpoint not long after you've left Ullapool. This is probably where I'd suggest staying if you didn't end up staying at the beaches the previous night. The view down the valley is absolutely gorgeous. So as you drive a little bit further south, eventually you're gonna arrive at one of our favorite places in Scotland, which is Gaelock Beach. The beach itself is beautiful, but the town around it's lovely, and it's just an all round great, peaceful, pretty place. We always spend quite a bit of time here. Shortly after you leave Gaelock though, you're gonna arrive at the incredible Loch Marie. Again, it's a huge, vast loch, and there's all sorts going on around Loch Marie, from waterfalls, walks, campsites, hikes up into the mountains. So just get your fill of whatever it is you're interested in, and then it's onwards towards Torridon. This section of drive is one of the nicest in Scotland. The valley is beautiful, the mountains are rugged, and it's just gorgeous. So soak it in, enjoy it, and when you get to the end, there's a car park on the right where we've seen a red deer standing there every single time we've visited. It's a pretty good way to see these beautiful animals up close. That said, I'm guessing it's here because people feed it. Now, I'm not an expert, but at least read the signs first because surely it can't be good to be, for us to be feeding it our food. Now the next part might be controversial, but this is where everyone else is gonna tell you about doing the best driving road in Scotland, Black Nabar, Apple Cross Pass. But in my opinion, you need to just skip it because it's awful. It's not a good road, it's tight, there's no passing places, and the view at the top really isn't worth the stress. If you wanna see what I mean, watch me NC500 revisited video and skip to see the last five minutes. It's truly atrocious, it's awful. Time to head somewhere to sleep for the night, ready for day six. We suggest somewhere near Loch Aran, somewhere around that way, which will carry you on nicely to our improved endpoint, which is next. It's day number six. The official route would now have you heading back across the country to Inverness, but there's nothing on this drive really, and at this point you're so close to some of Scotland's best locations, it would be a bad move to just not visit them. So next, you're gonna head south to Dorney. Now, if you are fancying a trip to the Isle of Skye, this is where I'd advise doing it because you're gonna be passing very close to the bridge that takes you to Skye. And if you are planning on doing Skye, I'd suggest grabbing a copy of our Ultimate Scottish Road Trip book that covers 
well basically everything including sky that you're sort of going to be spending a little bit more time around on this section anyway once you get to Dorney you must head to Eileen Donnan Castle you will not miss it it sticks out like a sore thumb and it's absolutely breathtaking you're heading inland now after that though and the route is just incredible there's so many amazing views you'll not have a clue where to look but eventually you're going to arrive at Fort William this is our next and final pit stop. There's loads here. You've got the Nevis Range, Neptune Staircase, Glenfin and Viaduct, which is from Harry Potter, not too far away. So fill your boots. And then after that, it's down towards Glencoe. For our final night, I'd suggest staying somewhere in this region though, between sort of Fort William and Glencoe. They're not far from each other, but you'll want to spend a couple of days to explore this area at least. For the most part, you're going to be driving through Glencoe to get home, so I'm going to suggest staying at Fort William instead as the place to spend like your last night. But anyway, after that, day number seven, it's your final day. You've got some of the best driving you'll ever do. You're going to be driving through Glencoe. Now, Glencoe could easily be at least 10 videos in itself. It's the best section of driving you'll ever do in the whole of Scotland. It's an easy drive. There's some incredible places to get food and drink, like the Clackey again. But in terms of pure drama, there's not many places like Glencoe. I'd suggest spending as much time as you can around this area. It's gorgeous and everyone, no matter who you are, will absolutely love it. And then after that, that's it really. You're heading south, back past Loch Lomond, and then back home, job done. But if you do want more information, more things to do, more things to see, more food stops and everything else, our NC500 Improved Travel Guide covers everything. There's over 450 different things to do to make sure you have the very best road trip you can possibly have. But even if you don't buy it, I hope this has helped you plan a perfect road trip. Thanks for watching.